Well, let's start in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The United Nations mission in the country's mandate is due to expire on Friday. And the UN is discussing extending that mandate. This comes after fresh troubles in the Kasai region. The Congolese government and the UN mission in the DRC are both investigating the deaths of UN investigators, American Michael Sharp and his Swedish colleague, Said Catalan. Their bodies were found earlier this week in the DRC's central Kasai region. Catalan had been decapitated. The two were investigating possible human rights abuses in the region when they went missing earlier in March. A third body was also found, likely that of their interpreter, Betu Tintella. Sweden has also opened a murder investigation. An inquiry was launched a day after their disappearance in Kananga. The inquiry gave us some leads and all the leads were taken seriously, carefully examined, eliminated one by one until we knew that they were somewhere around or beside the Moyo Bridge in the Dibaya area and that is where we found their remains. The investigation will continue until the killers are identified. Well, let's bring you the latest on this story now. Let's go live to New York, where our correspondent Lorna Shaddock is standing by. Uh, Lorna, just tell us when exactly is this meeting expected to take place in which the UN will, ex uh, will decide on extending the MINUSCO mandate? Well, it had actually been scheduled for earlier this week on Wednesday. Uh, we're now not seeing it on the agenda uh, for Thursday. Syria consultations are going on uh, this Thursday instead. But we do now know that they will be voting uh, on extending that MONUSCO mandate on Friday tomorrow. Uh, so uh, that comes after a sort of period of silence uh, when the uh, resolution was still being negotiated. Uh, it has now been put, uh, what they call here, in blue. So it is uh, viewable and uh, publicly available. Uh, and that vote will take place at midday uh, on Friday. And the main headline that we can get from that draft resolution now that we can see uh, what they've agreed to vote on uh, is that it wants to put a cap on the number uh, of peacekeepers. It will, sorry, it will cut uh, the cap on the number of peacekeepers in the DRC by 17%. So that number would go down uh, from 19,815, which is the current cap, to 18,316. Now we know France is leading the Security Council action uh, on the DRC and it had proposed a cap of 17,000. So uh, this cap uh, in the end seems to be somewhat higher. Uh, but we also know that as part of these negotiations, France went to the Department of Peacekeeping and asked them just how few troops they would be able to manage with, uh, showing there clearly is some downward pressure uh, on those numbers, not only from the government uh, in Kinshasa, but also uh, we think from the US, which uh, is definitely looking to cut its funding uh, and support for certain peacekeeping missions. And of course, uh, Lorna, as you suggest, there are a lot of focus on reducing the number of troops, but others might point to some rather pressing issues that also need to be addressed. I mean, as it stands, MONUSCO is a stabilizing force. Is there any likelihood at all that some of this will be relooked at? Might they strengthen the forces or amend their mandates in the country, given the renewed tensions? Well, it's interesting that I think uh, during the discussions about the renewal of this mandate, the strength of the force uh, was one of the key sticking points. And indeed, earlier in the month, Matthew Rykoff, who is uh, as the British ambassador, the current president of the Security Council this month, uh, came out after those discussions and said that uh, there was uh, some disagreement, particularly uh, given uh, what you were just talking about, the deaths of those two UN experts uh, in the DRC very recently, just underlines for some on the council the need for that continuing UN presence given uh, the violence in the country. But uh, others, uh, meanwhile, uh, as, I, as I say, particularly the US, looking to reduce the costs uh, involved. Uh, then again, we also have the Security, sorry, the uh, Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, uh, who himself has uh, recommended that more police uh, units in particular be sent. Uh, because, of course, with the elections coming up before the end of the year, his fear in particular is that there could be violence associated with those elections. Remember, the DRC has never had uh, a peaceful transfer of power since independence and the concern is that now is not really the time uh, to be reducing the number of uh, peacekeeping troops uh, given the concern for the safety of civilians but then of course as I say the pressure coming not only from the government in Kinshasa which uh, would like to see the number of troops reduced it says it could uh, cope with just uh, a special intervention brigade and no more and then of course also from the US which wants to save money uh, there have been these two sort of competing sides.
And indeed, just taking a closer look at the uh, U.S.'s position, we heard some uh, rather serious accusations coming from the U.S. ambassador at the U.N. today, saying that basically the U.N. is just supporting a corrupt Congolese government. Tell us more about that and the U.N.'s response so far. Yes, indeed. Very controversial remarks from Nikki Haley, who, of course, is uh, Donald Trump's uh, ambassador to the United Nations, pretty new in the job. She uh, made those remarks speaking to the Council of Foreign Relations, on Foreign Relations uh, here in New York. And she said, well, the mandate of UN peacekeepers in the DRC is to support the government, as she put it. And she said that is a government that is, she said, corrupt and preys on its citizens, which means, she said, that the UN is aiding a government that is inflicting predatory behavior on its own people. And we should have the decent and common sense to end this. So not uh, particularly diplomatic language uh, from uh, Nikki Haley. And uh, that led to a pretty strong response uh, from uh, the UN spokesman uh, Farhan Huck. Uh, he sort of quashed those claims. He said, well, no, the mandate uh, for the peacekeeping mission ultimately is to protect and safeguard the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. That uh, mission is not there to aid any particular force or any particular government. So uh, a strong response uh, from the UN. But I think that shows really the US position uh, on peacekeeping is changing. It is the major funder, of course, for uh, UN peacekeeping. 28% uh, of the UN peacekeeping budget is paid for by the US. And Nikki Haley has said she wants to review each of those 16 UN peacekeeping missions around the world uh, to see whether they are cost effective and still needed. So clearly a lot of pressure uh, budget wise. And it seems that perhaps uh, these uh, she, those words were partly a justification for why the US is looking at reducing uh, numbers and support for peacekeeping in DRC. Indeed. Lorna Shaddock, thanks very much for that update. Joining us there from New York. And as she says, that discussion on renewing the MINUSCO mandate is now scheduled for tomorrow, Friday, midday New York time.